I'm Dr. Lim here. Today, we will continue with the second part of uh, nursing training, uh, which is very important. We, I will briefly go through what we are doing in uh, Poiber Gang Society, so that uh, from the first two slides, we will lead you to why we need to have this uh, lecture today. Now, we have a Missy Watch. We're going to launch our Missy Watch. Uh, this um, intelligent IoT watch in which we will monitor non-medical grade blood pressure of the user, monitor the pulse, monitor the oxygen saturation, freeze temperature, and also you will count how many steps they take in a day. And it has GPS location, especially when they press the SOS button. As you can see the watch here, there's a red button Call for help. From which you will send three things out. First, auto down the children's number, phone number. Second, you will send the SMS to the children's phone number. Third thing, you will alert the apps that link with the watch. But for example, the children's app link to the watch. So these are the intelligent things that we monitor for them. Based on the parameters that moni we monitor, for example, blood pressure, pulse, saturation and temperature we use um, my clinical practice experience and using an AI formula to calculate out so we no longer use the general range of normal parameters or normal parameters we individualize the parameters for example if someone's heart rate is 60 suddenly the heart rate increased by 20 to 80 over the last two days. Although the 80 is still within the normal range, but because it's already more than 30% from the baseline, therefore, it will alert the apps and that apps that link to the watch. The prompt the watch ask them whether this so and so has abnormal heart rate readings that increase more than 30% from the average, you like to point or ask our nurse to go to the house to check what's going on. So based on these abnormal parameters, we need our nurses to be well trained according to my protocol what to do when they reach the house of the user. So they will try to zoom down what are the possible causes and generate report. So for the next few slides, we'll go through a few things. Management plan for low blood pressure, management plan for high blood pressure, high pulse rate, low pulse rate, high temperature, low temperature, and low oxygen saturation. In our apps, there's also a service call home, a home assessment protocol, which we'll go through as well. Means that when the user order this home service, what shall we do? Now, we'll go through briefly. Uh, all this will be made available for you all to study, memorize it. So what are the causes for low blood pressure? I'll briefly glance to, for example, heart problem, heart valve problem that cause heart attack, cause, cause heart failure, valve disease, and some pertaining disease will cause low heart rate or bradycardia. Certain hormone disease, for example, hypoglycemia, Addison disease can cause low blood pressure, dehydrated because of the excessive diarrhea vomiting, overuse of a frusomite diuretics, after a strenuous exercise or fever. Loss can cause low blood pressure. Liver infection, no, where we know very well, that like cause septicemia. Severe allergic reaction. Lack of nutrients in the diet. And definitely a few medications, for example, diuretics cause dehydration. Or hydrochlorothiazide, HCT. And to some extent, sp uh, spinal recton also can cause... Uh, and definitely certain blood pressure pill, for example, prazosine, commonly seen, beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, like for example, amlodipine, certain drugs for Parkinson's disease, certain drugs for depression, for example, doxepine, imipramine, certain drugs for erectile dysfunction, for example, sildenafil, Vigra, Tadanafil, or Cialis, in particular, when they are taken with heart medication, for example, nitroglycerin, or um, uh, what we usually see in natural stuff. So what are the symptoms when there's a blood low blood pressure? They start to feel blurred, faded vision, giddy spell, fainting spell, fatigue, unable to focus. And when the blood pressure is too low, they tend to feel nausea. 
and it worse, it will get worsened, get become confused, especially in older people. Then they have a cold and clammy hand and become pallor. And the breathing become rapid, sometimes shallow. Pulse is weak and rapid. Now, this is a flow chart. Now, this flow chart that for you to study, to memorize, we are trying to convert this flow chart into a Google form in the apps so that when you reach, when you're alert to take the job, you alert you when the children agreed to send a nurse to the house for low robot pressure, for example, they press, then we send a nurse there. The nurse will receive the order indicating that the history of the particular patient and what the blood pressure range that drop. And once you have that, you can open the Google form and go through the checklist. So actually it's very simple. Today I'll go through the checklist so that you understand why I put in such a way. And you just need to tick, 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 tick only and zoom down and then submit report. That's it. You are not required to go back diagnosis because uh, even doctor can't do it on the spot. So we just help the family to pinpoint what the possible causes and advise them hospital treatment immediately. All right. So we can see that we go through the symptom. Go there, ask the patient whether they have their dehydration symptom or not. Why the cause of uh, dehydration, whether they have uh, excessive vomiting diarrhea for the last few days, a long hour exposure under the sun, as you do the sun exposure, vomiting diarrhea, probably gun infection or food poisoning. Then we encourage them, what do you do? Suggest next cause of action. We say, okay, encourage free intake, seek doctor treatment. Uh, next few days, please don't take oily meal, small but frequent meal if there's a vomiting. If it is a uh, sun exposure, I encourage through intake, seek doctor treatment because we don't know uh, the extensive of the dehydration whether it has caused acute kidney injury or not. Then we look for the bleeding symptoms. Ask them whether you have a uh, coffee gall vomitus, any melina stool, or blood stain stool, or hem hematuria. And what are the causes? Possible gut, stomach bleeding, kidney stone. Then we ask them to walk, seek hospital treatment. So we don't have to get, we don't have to give courses. We just need to ask and then take. Then we submit report to the children, right? And then infection, we go through screening infection, whether there's a fever or flu phlegm indicating there's some infection that cause sepsis, breathlessness, lung infection, or heart event, urinary, dysuria, hematuria frequency, UTI, AGE, whether the gut infection or food poisoning, only cause dehydration, but because of the endotoxin, cause septicemia. Now we look at the abdomen, it can be the gallbladder sepsis and pima, or even gastroenteritis or dysentery and cause or subacute intestinal obstruction, cause septicemia and cause uh, low blood pressure sepsis. We go for the heart screening, whether there's a chest pain, palpitation, cold sweat, indicating heart event leading to low blood pressure. Allergic, whether you check whether or oh, do you have uh, skin rashes, you take care recently for the last one, two days, and observe whether there's a stride or a wheezing. Then if such thing, seek hospital treatment. Then we look at the medical history. Okay, well, wh whether the, are you on any tradi the traditional medicine, over-the-counter medicine, and stop recently. Oh yeah, because, the, like, for example, TCM, uh, Momo medicine, traditional medicine for joint pain, a lot of time they have steroid. And they have been taking it for months, suddenly they stop for last few days or for one, two weeks. They cause withdrawal syndrome and hands causing a dysonian crisis and low blood pressure. Any previous heart surgery or angioplasty, it make the heart event possible to cause low blood pressure. Same as drug history, we have to look into drug history. Look, we have to take whether this patient on this medication or not. What are the possible causes? For every medication, whether there is overdose by tablet, that means they're supposed to take one tablet. Now they take two tablets wrongly. They're supposed to take once a day, but they took two times a day. There's overdose by frequency. Overdose by two brands. That is a common problem, when, if, especially if we take medicine from government hospital. They keep on changing brand, generic brand. For example, uh, amlodipine. It can be a Hovas, it can be a Novas. And 
Next month, when the old stock still available, next month they go and see doctor. Doctor prescribe again become Horvath. They don't know. They thought the new new medicine. So they are taking amlodipine Horvath and amlodipine Horvath together and crash the blood pressure. So it's called overdose by two brands or newly added drug. See, a lot of patients may have a white coat hypertension. They see doctor at home. The blood pressure just nice 110, 120. When the patient add on, uh, the doctor add on prazosin, the blood pressure can crash. So you write down what are the possible culpable drug and what the possible reason here. Maybe underdose by tablet, underdose by frequency, or running out of stock. They suppose to take amenobidipine, but because of uh, sorry, running out of stock, so certain medicine that cause low blood pressure, and uh, miss in error in prescription. That means a uh, doctor forgot to prescribe certain things. Right. So what the action taken? What you can write here and ask them to seek doctor counseling. So we try to identify for the family members. Right. Examination, we're supposed to on the spot check the blood pressure, heart rate, indicate whether it's slow, slow or fast, whether irregular or regular, and next course of action, seek doctor treatment immediately. So whatever it is, we always write there, seek doctor treatment immediately. So we don't write, the form will automatically return there as long as we just stick on it. Of course, we're supposed to check whether it's hypoglycemia or not, or uncontrolled diabetic and hydration status, normal weather standard, you have to check. Whether check the limbs, toes, spine, um, heel, and bottom of the toes, whether there's ulcer, gangrene, cellulitis. Diabetic patients, when they have a whole ulcer at the bottom of the toes, they may not be aware there's no pain. So it's our job to identify it. Bit sore. Bunker and cellulitis for those bit ridden one with bit sore. The bunker, they can't see it at the back. Uh, you have to check the diaper, especially those patients on diapers, check whether there's a melina and joint, whether it's tender and swollen, indicating joint infection. So we just tick only the form. <clears throat> now, for hybrid pressure, <clears throat> we're talking about hybrid pressure. Hybrid pressure. We use the American guideline or using European guideline. If you look at the European guideline, American guideline is very simple. H1 is 130 to 140 for systolic, diastolic 80 to 90. H2 is 140 and 90 and above. When there's hypertensive crisis, 180 systolic or 120 above for diastolic. Why there's a sudden spike of the hybrid? The EMC watch, MC watch will be able to detect a sudden spike pressure over two days. And commonly found is due to the dosing error, poor compliance, certain flu medicine, and NSAID cause sudden spike of blood pressure. Food and drink, especially they take excessive caffeine recently. And in my clinical practice, we see a lot of patients after a kanduri, after increased salt intake or fast food, a lot of red meat they will shoot up the blood pressure for as long as one to two weeks. Whether there's white coat hypertension, they have gone to the see, they have gone to the clinic or hospital to see a doctor, their sudden spike of the blood pressure, stress, anxiety, pain, CKD, chronic kidney disease, thyroid issue, like for example, hypothyroidism, overactive adrenal gland, like corn disease, illegal drug cocaine will shoot up blood pressure, smoking excessive alcohol. Of course, pregnancy-related hybrid pressure as well. Now, what do they have in symptoms? They have intermittent headache, palpitation, fatigue, giddiness, and breath. Now, these are very important hypertensive crises here. What are the common symptoms of a hypertensive crisis? They tend to have chest pain, excessive sweating because of the impact blood flow to the heart, or start to have pulmonary edema, sonata of breath and sweating. Facial flushing, blood spot in the eye, conjunctiva hemorrhage, and they may have difficulty in speaking due to impending stroke or already have a stroke. This is a flow for high blood pressure. Again, we will try to put it in the Google form. You just need to retrieve, go through the list, check one by one. I see. Very simple. I go through a few of them. For example, you ask the sleep whether they have been insomnia. Cannot fall into sleep, early awakening. Sleep disturbance can cause hyperpressure uncontrolled. 
So we advise them what to do. Emotion, they have emotion recently, anxiety, maybe the uh, son admitted to the hospital, they got worried. So we advise them to stay calm. Whether there's a pain induced causing the high blood pressure, whether there's ongoing infection that causes high blood pressure, whether there's a worsening kidney failure and cause high, sudden storm jump in the blood pressure, like nausea, vomiting, these are the end stage kidney disease symptoms, Worry, worsening CKD, itchy skin, loss of appetite, or there's a cardiac event like chest pain, palpitation, cause high blood pressure, sweat. Now, whether there's patient on traditional medicine, steroid, steroid can cause high blood pressure, way of pushing, right? Whether taking NSAID recently, NSAID can cause high blood pressure. Increased salty food recently, processed food, whether they have tended any kanduri, caffeine. Then next, we go to the history again, uh, what medication they're on, and then we write down the culprit. Culprit means that any particular medicine they, that they have taken wrongly by all these means. Right? So we write down, and what's the reason? Then we action taken. Then at least when we submit to the children, mm -hmm. they know that we have identified the problem for them. So we actually can save a lot of life from here. So the purpose of us setting up MISI Watch and so forever, forever Young Society, I hope I can extend my clinical practice to a bigger population and we can save life, reduce mortality and reduce mobility. And again, we do the examination, blood pressure, pulse, indicate slow, fast, regular, irregular, check the sugar level, fluid retention, whether there's ongoing edema due to fluid overload. Fluid overload can cause high blood pressure. Vice versa, high blood pressure can cause heart failure and cause fluid overload. Abdomen, tendon or palpation, infection can cause pain, can cause high blood pressure. Back, whether there is a pain over a fracture. Uh, you'll be surprised that a lot of elderly have a fracture at the back and don't know how to have the condition. This cause insomnia, this cause blood pressure high. And tender swollen joint cause arthritis and cause pain and cause high blood pressure. Then we look at the complication of an organ damage. We take opportunity to check because most of them, they go don't go see doctor. It's just continue taking the blood pressure pill. So we take opportunity to help the patient. Whether there's a chest pain, breathless, leg edema due to the coronary heart disease or heart failure, whether the high blood pressure has caused kidney failure. Uh, sorry, this is uh, not anxiety. This should be kidney damage. I will change it for you all. Then whether they cause stroke, especially when the sudden surge of high blood pressure, either it cause hemorrhagic stroke or then we check at the third speech on disorientation, double vision, imbalance gait. Our eyes, whether they have double vision because of the stroke, retinal hemorrhage, blur vision, stroke, retinal hemorrhage, stroke in the way, uh, occipital stroke, eat in the subconjunctal conjunctiva area, pain in the eye can cause glycoma as coexisting complication, hyperpressure. What are the symptoms? Now, this part is more hypertensive crisis. Once you can detect one of the symptoms, especially coincide with the blood pressure more than 180 systolic or one more than 120 of diastolic blood pressure, then we diagnose as hypertensive crisis. Then we have to send the patient immediately to the hospital from the children. Chest pain, breathless, cold sweat, bleed from the nose into the eyes, slurred speech, orientated, alter conscious level, like edema. Right, so this is high blood pressure. We are talking about next is high pulse rate. Right, what are the causes of high pulse rate? Fever, heart problem, anemia, heavy alcohol use, or even al alcohol withdrawal, caffeine, high or low blood pressure can cause hemodynamic instability and cause high blood pressure, high pulse rate, imbalance of the electrolyte. Medication side effect, thyroid problem, thyrotoxicosis, anemia, cause of the causing uh, 
caused by the bleeding. Dehydrated can cause tachycardia. Smoking, use of illegal drugs, for example, stimulants such as cocaine and methamphetamine. What are the symptoms of a heart high pulse rate? Like pounding heartbeat over the chest wall, chest pain, because it's too high and we have a syncopal attack. Like for example, when we see come to emergency department, patients syncopal attack due to the SVT, uh, they have light headedness, rapid pulse rate, and shortened of breath. breath, especially the heart rate is fast, cause uneasy symptoms or even pulmonary edema. So again, this is the heart high pulse rate management plan. Again, here you just need to take relevant to high pulse rate. So I put it here, all the symptoms that are relevant to high pulse rate for the pulse. Meeting the area cause uh, high pulse rate dehydration and sepsis by itself. Long hour exposure under sun dehydration, bleeding can cause high pulse rate because of the anemia and infection. Now, I have to take note that elderly tend to have high pulse rate without any other symptom when there's infection. For example, if there's a UTI, they may not have dysuria, they may not have frequency. They will probably run with the high pulse rate for the first few days. They may have pneumonia without cough. They may not even have fever, but they will have high pulse rate. That's why I believe that with our Missy Watch and with our AI monitoring system, we, we will be able to pick up a lot of early sepsis, early infection. Therefore, we can save a lot of life from this. And so as cough, flu, breathlessness, indicating growing infection in the lung, urinary tract infection, dysuria, hematuria frequency, and elderly in particular, they may not have these three symptoms, but they present with incontinence. AGE, gut infection, food poisoning, cause tachycardia, no pain, sepsis, either by itself, gastro gastroenteritis, dysentery, diabetic colitis, or subacute intestinal obstruction. Heart cold sweat, palpitation, chest pain can cause tachycardia due to the heart event. Previous heart surgery or angioplasty make heart event more likely. So when we tick, it can be multiple ticks, not only one, right? And caffeine, we looked at the time history. And drug history is very important in particular. For example, blood pressure pill, whether they have been taking, supposed to take uh, metoprolol or misoprolol or ethanolol. But because it's underdosed by tablet or the doctor forgot to prescribe or running out of stock, therefore the heart rate goes up. Then they scalp it with the ethanolol, then it's underdosed with it. Right, so we should be able to tell. Or patient never exposed to calcium channel blocker, for example, nifedipine. Suddenly, doctor added nifedipine. Therefore, the heart rate increased. So right then, nifedipine, 10 milligram TDS, you read added drug. Right, thyroid medication. Ah, yeah. So what are the culprit? Probably patient already on hypothyroidism on l thyroxine replacement therapy. Suddenly, patient talk, took wrongly two tablets instead of one tablet and caused tachycardia. Right? Or patient erythrocytosis on carbimazole. But somehow, because he forgot to take the medicine or running out of stock or non compliant, then therefore, thyroid hormone control caused fast heart rate therapy. Uh, flu medicine. Can cause high pulse rate. Asthma, if they take in particular ventolin tablet or excessive use of the inhaler, ventolin or briconeal can cause high pulse rate. Why detect that? Why they are using excessive ventolin? Probably because asthma not well controlled. Then we can nip it on the butt, try to help the patient. Diuretic overdose cause dehydration and subsequently cause high blood pressure. Uh, sorry, high, high pulse rate. So these are very important. Then look at the examination. Again, we check the sugar, blood pressure, everything. Identify whether this is AF or not. Now, in elderly, 
particular if they have a sepsis, they always, oh, sorry, they may show AF, atrial fibrillation, right? So we can identify possible of underlying and septicemia. Look at the hydration status. We check the abdomen, limbs, whether there's ongoing ulcer, gangrene, psoriasis that cause tachycardia. The back, whether there's an infection, carbuncle, psoriasis, typhus, whether there's a melina that cause ulcerate joint, infection, thyroid, whether there's a tremor, sweaty palm, uh, exothermose, whether there's a neck swelling, possible of hyperthyroidism. Next, we'll go through slow pulse rate. What are the causes of slow pulse rate? Heart related. For example, sorry, we'll go through because we will have the slide for you to refer to, right? I just glance through, uh, go through briefly because we have study in your nursing school. Heart related, uh, chronic heart disease, heart attack, congenital heart disease, myocarditis, pericarditis, rheumatic fever, balanced electrolyte, hypothyroidism, sleep apnea, the medication, for example, beta blockers, um, arrhythmia drug like digoxin, amiodarone, opioid like morphine, amador. So what are the symptoms of slow pulse, pulse rate? Nausea, vomiting, sweating, chest pain, neck or jaw pain because slow pulse rate reduce cardiac output. They cause ischemia to the heart and cause angina. Headiness, like headiness, because of the reduced cardiac output, Increased effort tolerance, ethnic weakness, breathless, even confusion or memory problem if you persistent. Painting the syncopal attack due to the low pulse rate and loss of Now, this is a flow chart how to check them. And upon reaching the patient's house, we go through all the symptoms, what are the possible causes, whether there's a kidney issue, why there's a kidney issue here? Because CKD reaching end stage kidney disease, or even stage four kidney disease, if the patient take excessive high potassium medication uh, diet, for example, banana, spinach, they may cause increase in potassium. This increased potassium can cause bradycardia. Or stage five kidney disease, they're supposed to go for diagnosis, they didn't go for diagnosis, then they will have low power straight due to hyperkalemia. Those patients on dialysis will cause have much problem if they have adequate dialysis or they take excessive high, high potassium diet. Again, heart can cause low power state, especially right type heart attack, especially inferior MI, myocardial infarction, cause low power state. Hypothyroidism cause low power state, particular lethargy and breathless. Any previous heart surgery or angioplasty make it possible for cardiac event. There again, drug history, opiate, knowing very well, like commonly used more opiate that we see in the clinical practice day to day is more morphine, or even tramadol can cause low pulse rate in certain patients. Antiarrhythmia, digoxin, amiodarone, uh, because these are very narrow therapeutic medication, uh, and especially with drug drug interaction, so it may cause excessive high dose of digoxin, or low dose, lower dose of glucose level and cause slow pulse. Therefore, look at the medication list. We check the hypertension medicine, thyroid medication, whether I was a culprit and the culprit because of overdose or underdose, what's the reason of underdose, dose, or any new, newly added medication that cause slow pulse rate. Right? And examination, as we sure. Look at the hydration status. Uh, dehydration, dehydration sometimes when the severe can cause slow pulse rate because of the complication. Abdomen where there's infection. Now, if you work in hospital and ICU setting, you notice that severe sepsis may cause slow pulse rate due to the endotoxin itself, due to the hemodynamic itself, or even due to the certain um, uh, heart complication. Now, now limbs infection can cause low heart rate, back infection, thyroid, any swollen leg, possible hypothyroidism or heart failure. Next, we'll talk about high temperature. Because uh, Missy watched 
table will be able to monitor temperature. Temperature here are put as long as more than 37.5 or 38. Elderly, if there's an infection, the increment in the temperature is very subtle, may not be high, especially those 55 years and above. So usually infection can cause high temperature, heat exhaustion, inflammatory autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, some medication, such as antibiotic, and also a certain use, medicine used to treat high blood pressure or seizures. Immunization like Bunza, diphtheria, tetanus, pneumococcal, or even COVID vaccine. If emotional reaction can cause high blood pressure, like for example, hysteria, wrong stress, hormone changes, for example, first trimester of pregnancy or menopause lady, respiratory disease, cold, flu, bronchitis, interstitial, pneumonia, chronic infection like TB, commonly seen or Lyme disease, endocrine, thyrotoxicosis can cause fever, Addison disease can cause fever as well. Certain tumors like kidney tumor, leukemia, lymphoma can cause. What are the symptoms of high temperature? Again, sweating, chills, shivering, headache. The egg loss of appetite, irritability, dehydration, and general weakness. Now, we have to know about the management because during that time, we may do some management to bring down the temperature. For example, uh, cold water compressed, uh, sitting in the cold water if possible for severe hyperthermia, wearing light clothes, sitting in cool or cool places, then um, we need some medication. What's the management plan? Look at whether there's a infection ongoing or dehydration ongoing. Thyroid problem, whether there's a signs or uh, symptoms of hyperthyroidism, uh, infection symptoms, symptoms of the lungs, throat, on sale, urinary tract infection, gut, abdomen, back and buttock for it sore, carbuncles, and then also toes of web tips of toes kill ulcer gangrene. Right. Thyroid problem, any past medical history of thyroid problem, then we know that probably there's a recurrent of thyrotoxicosis coincide with other signs and symptoms. Drug history, whether patient on certain antihypertensive drug, thyroid medication or anti seizures medication. Examination, we check as usual and look at the temperature. Temperature right there, we write down normal, low or high and hydration status. Then check the abdomen, whether there's a limb ulcer or not in the limbs, back of there's a carbuncle psoriasis, joint there's an infection or not, or others you just write here. If you find that the temperature is more than 39, please do a tapage sponging. Now, what are the causes of the low temperature? Now we go to the low temperature. But, so possible causes are, they are wearing clothes that not warm enough or weather condition, cold condition, they are not wearing warm enough. Staying out in the cold too long, this is in pertaining to the European temperate country. Falling into the water and in our place, mainly soaked in the rain. This is a common problem in elderly. Hormonal condition, hypothyroidism can cause low temperature. So, due to the neuroregulatory problem, Spinal cord injury due to the neuroregulatory problem. Multiple sclerosis, a kind of a brain degenerative disease, and also can cause hypothalamic area neuroregulatory uh, uh, temperature problem as well. Infection, severe infection also can cause low temperature. If you work in ICU, you know that sometimes you have to use multiple warmer to warm the temperature up for severe sepsis patients. Management, uh, what are the symptoms of the low temperature? Do you feel cold, slow speech mumbling, slow and shallow breathing because of the brain suppression? House, clumsiness, drowsy, confusion, or even loss of consciousness. This is the management flow. Again, whether we check history, whether they are soaked in water recently or not, yeah. whether there's wet clothing. Uh, you ask a patient whether you caught the rain for the last one day or this morning, uh, whether there's a stroke 
okay, that cause low blood pressure, uh, low temperature, sorry, uh, weak one side, tremor, numbness, uh, imbalanced gait, possible stroke. Speech. Check whether they are slurred speech, unable to speak. Orientation confused, speech incoherent. Understand what we say, possible stroke. Infection, as I said, severe infection, infection can cause low temperature. Like look at the lungs symptoms, look at the UV tract symptoms, look at the gut symptoms, and look at dormant symptoms, look at the back, buttock for a bit sore, redness, of carbuncles, uh, and then toe webs, there's an ulcer or not, gangrene or not, right? And thyroid problem, whether there's a recurrent thyroid issue or not, past medical history from here. Then we check whether whether patient on thyroid medication that's wrong with the thyroid medication, whether because of the L tyrosine they forgot to take, then patient become hypothyroidism, or they are supposed to be on tamimazole hyperthyroidism. Tamimazole, they they take overdose and cause low, uh, take overdose until hypothyroid. Examination, again, we look at the temperature here right now. Abdomen, check for the signs of the infection here. And then limbs, look any other possible signs of stroke, whether one side is not moving. Then there's a signs of uh, infection or not from the joint, from the back. And then also thyroidism, whether it's swollen leg possible of hypothyroidism. Next, we talk about low oxygen saturation. Because PC watch will be able to detect oxygen saturation well. So are the, are, are the possible causes of the low oxygen saturation? For example, anemia, lung problem, asthma, chronic obstructive lung disease, acute lung illness, pneumonia, pneumothorax, pulmonary edema, and pulmonary embolism, heart problem, heart failure, certain medication, narcotic, Anesthetic that suppress the breathing effort, sleep apnea, and not so pertaining to elderly are located in heart, young adults, or children. What are the symptoms of low oxygen saturation? Of course, the symptom by itself is caused by the disease itself. For example, asthma, they will have wheezing, coughing, phlegm. Due to the infection, they have a great uh, prurent phlegm fever, and like that, they have a trouble breathing, irritability, confusion, because hypoxia, drowsiness, due to especially a COD uh, with a CO2 detention, and they have a cyanosis here, rapid breathing, rapid heart rate, abnormal heart rate, like atrial fibrillation as a complication. Or atrial fibrillation itself can cause pulmonary edema and cause low oxygen saturation. Cognitive or visual changes if the oxygen saturation drops up to 80 to 85%. Now, again, what is the flow? What are we supposed to look out for? Are the symptoms whether you have been vomiting, um, coffee down, or menina, blood stains too, anemia, and cause low oxygen? There is ongoing lung infection, worsening of the pneumonia. Other lung illness, for example, wheezing, either from the asthma itself or from the COAD, thick yellow phlegm ongoing or throat infection, leg swollen and pain due to the lung infection or heart pain, like for example, pulmonary edema complicated from QMI. Now, chest pain, heart event, cold sweat indicating heart event, leg swollen, possible of heart failure. Then look at the past medical history. Whether there's a previous heart surgery, angioplasty, and make it heart event or heart failure likely to cause low oxygen saturation. Previous lung disease, uh, they have been having COAD, they have been having asthma, or they have a frequent admission to hospital due to bronchitis. So, lung illness exacerbation is a possible cause. And excessive free intake. This is a common problem in our daily practice. Uh, they come in the breathless, low saturation. Then we check through, oh, actually they have been taking a lot of fluid recently and they cause fluid overload. And this category of patient, it can be from heart failure patient, 
take them over, become decompensated failure. Or this scapular patient can belong to those with underlying liver failure or chronic kidney disease patient already with some fluid overload. The excessive free intake keep them over and develop pulmonary edema. Now again, drug history, look at whether there's an ongoing, uh, uh, they have been on taking blood pressure pill, thyroid medication, morphine that suppress the uh, breathing pattern, asthma, whether they take the medicine correctly or not, or because they are finishing, they have finished the medication already, or the doctor changed or add on new medication not suitable to control the asthma. So diuretics can cause uh, low oxygen because of the hydration and hypotensive. Heart failure drug and trestor digoxin can cause pulmonary uh, those patients on this indicating that they have uh, heart failure. So either the dose is not adequate or they are not compliant or they are underdose because of the frequency, underdose or because of the tablet and keep them over become decompensated. So we may be able to identify the possible cause. Right. So examination, we check the blood pressure, pulse, everything as usual. Then we look at simple signs whether there's free overload. Of course, we don't expect you to be able to pick up pulmonary edema from auscultation of the lungs, but at least clinical symptoms of big swollen, we should be able to. Abdomen, there's an intended due to ascites. Uh, whether there's a critical condition, that I hope we can pick it up. If you have breathlessness, cyanose, sweating, wheezing, can't even speak food sentences, then we help them to call 999 and others. That is the parameters that will be detected by AC Watch if there is individualized abnormal parameters. And alert the children, asking the children, from the children, whether they want uh, Missy care to send a nurse to the house to assess. Next, last, we will talk about home assessment protocol because in our apps, they are able to select this as the home services. So what do we do if we receive an order of home assessment protocol? Very simple. Again, we have a form ready in a Google form. So what you need to do is just tick, tick, tick and submit and we generate report to the patient family. The main need is to look at the general well-being, general health of the patient. And also, in particular, the elderly, whether the home environment is safe for the elderly or not. By doing that, we should be able to prevent a lot of fall, prevent a lot of uh, unnecessary morbidity and hospitalization. So there were a patient in particular, the Google form will auto-generate if there is a request. Then we'll measure the blood pressure right here. Uh, then we we'll look at the respiratory temperature. We look at the compression of the uh, patient, how's the visual news, whether well kept or mid or not, upper limb movement is normal. We look, do a simple assessment of hearing, check whether there's foot ulcer or not, lower limb movement. Then we put normal abnormal. Then look at the environment, the flooring. Flooring, flooring. Whether they're high step, they're slippery fall. High step means that in between rooms there's high step, not suitable for elderly. Obstacle in the walkway. They put simply put stools, simply put boxes in the walkway. Tend to trip the elderly over and cause fracture, cause fall. Whether there are there are wires and caught on the floor, and then there's a steep grade. Slippery map, unsuitable floor map, floor map or carpet, then we take the stick here. Then look at the illumination, I lighting and switch. Whether there's adequate lighting. Inadequate lighting cause four because they can't see the walkway properly, they can't see the staircase properly. If there's an obstacle, they also can't see it. Room switch is accessible or not. This is very particular, import, particularly important, especially for the sleeping or bedroom of the elderly. The switch. Of light should be immediately next to the door when they open it and access it, not the other wall again opposite of the door. So the moment they open the door, they should be able to access the switch and switch the light on. Who glare the light, especially at night upon waking up, 
will blur the vision, there's a time they tend to have fall. We look at the environment assessment, look at the chair table furnishing, whether the chair, especially whether there are stable legs or not, the chair have the long arm rest to make them easier to get up. So long arm rest is good because it can support them when getting up. The chair is not supposed to have wheels. So chair no wheel, yes, it's good. Environment assessment, look at the kitchen cabinet, uh, whether the common items at the waste level. Like for example, if they stay alone or they make their food alone, prepare their breakfast alone, Milo, milk, cereal, sugar should be at the waste level. They don't have to climb a stool to assess it. They don't have to bend down to get it. So it's a good basement of the food that commonly used by elderly. Rubber mat and the sink area. Very important because sink area tend to wet. If the mat is no rubber mat, they tend to fall and sleep, sleep and fall. And then the shelf are suitable height. The shelf that store the thing is suitable height. They don't need to take stool to get the things they want. Then go to the bathroom, whether they're high step or not. So elderly bathroom is not supposed to have high step between the bathroom and the room. It should be flat. And shouldn't have slippery fall. And if possible, the toilet seat should have a grab bar. And they should have a heat resistant rubber mat here. And then there's no steep grade. There's a safety door lock. Means that they can lock from inside, but if anything happens, the family can unlock it easily from outside to save them. Shower, they should have a grab bar. Whether the walking is suitable or not, or they require any walking aid, you can write here. Then you sign and sign off. So these are whole assessment tools right that's it 